So Logan Kilpatrick, lead product manager at Google AI Studio, tweets out this. Super intelligence is looking more and more probable by the month. This is what Ilya saw. He then goes on to explain why he thinks this, and also talks about AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence. Next, OpenAI has recently considered building their own humanoid robot. They are already heavily invested in Figure, which is powered by one of OpenAI's latest models, GPT-4, as well as 1x Robotics and general purpose AI firm, Physical Intelligence. We are starting to see a lot of big AI companies jump into the humanoid robotics game. Lastly, Meta recently announced what they envision for the future of social media. The company sees AI characters becoming a regular part of its social networks in the coming years. In this video, we'll explore how people are reacting to this announcement, and why the dead internet theory might be closer to reality than we once thought. So jumping right into it, we have this insane tweet from Google's lead product manager, Logan Kilpatrick. He states, straight shot to ASI is looking more and more probable by the month. This is what Ilya saw. And further, Ilya founded SSI with the plan to do a straight shot to artificial super intelligence. No intermediate products, no intermediate model releases. Many people, me included, saw this as unlikely to work since if you get the flywheel spinning on models slash products, you can build a real moat. So here he's talking about Ilya Sutskever's new AI startup called SSI, or safe super intelligence. Ilya created this startup after leaving his position of chief AI scientist at OpenAI back in May of 2024 and made it clear that their only goal was to create a safe super intelligence. On their official website, which is literally just one page long, it states, we have started the world's first straight shot SSI lab with one goal and one product, a safe super intelligence. Now, going back to Kilpatrick's tweet, he says, however, the success of scaling test time compute, which Ilya likely saw early signs of, is a good indication that this direct direct path to just continuing to scale up might actually work. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Ilya Sutskever lore, essentially when he left OpenAI, there were a ton of rumors about something he may have seen behind closed doors that made him want to leave. This is where the meme, what did Ilya see, comes from, and at the time, the consensus amongst the AI community was that Ilya saw QSTAR, which was the initial codename for OpenAI's reasoning or thinking model. QSTAR, which at first was literally just a rumor, then became Strawberry, which then became O1. If you're hearing all this for the first time, I know it may be a bit confusing, but the point is that what Ilya likely saw was the early beginnings of OpenAI's old model series. This prompted him to start his own AI startup with, again, the goal of creating a safe super intelligence. So OpenAI's old model series, which is based on the new scaling paradigm of test time compute, which proves that the longer you give a model to think, the better it performs, might just be what will take us to super intelligence. At least, that's what Ilya Sutskever seems to believe. Now, Kilpatrick states, we are still going to get AGI, but unlike the consensus from four years ago that it would be this inflection point moment in history, it's likely going to just look a lot like a product release with with many iterations and similar options in the market within a short period of time. Which, FYI, is likely the best outcome for humanity, so personally happy about this. So this is an incredibly important point he makes here, because people think that once we achieve AGI, it will be some huge thing and our lives will completely change, but in reality, it'll likely just feel like another product release. Think about it like this, if we take the iPhone for example and its entire ecosystem, it's really just a combination of multiple technological breakthroughs put together. You have the touchscreen interface, which was invented decades before it, the ability to play music digitally, also invented decades before it, the operating system that powers the iPhone, and much more. The issue was that most of these technologies were still in their infancy and were either way too expensive or simply way too inefficient. Now, with the automation of telecommunications, the massive investment in cell towers and Wi-Fi infrastructure, it allowed a device like the iPhone to actually be useful and feasible for almost any human being. Similarly, once we achieve AGI or artificial general intelligence, which some may argue we already have, we're still going to be lacking the infrastructure to make it feasible for all humans to use. It's going to be extremely expensive at first, it won't be that useful, and it'll also be really inefficient. Just look at O3's score on the ARC AGI challenge. Yes, it scored 87.5%, a score way higher than anything we've seen before, but what OpenAI doesn't like to advertise is that it costed them hundreds of thousands of dollars to achieve it. So for AGI to actually be useful and accessible to everyone, it's going to require a ton of power, which is why a lot of these AI companies are exploring nuclear energy, possibly some form of embodiment, like humanoid robots to make it useful in the real world, and of course agentic capabilities and possibly even self-awareness. These are things that are currently being worked on, and there may also be other pieces of the puzzle that we have yet to discover. Also, if you're watching this right now, you have to understand that you are in the 1%. The vast majority of people have no idea how close we truly are to AGI or ASI. In fact, most of them don't even know what those terms are. And you can't really blame them, I mean they simply don't have the time to keep up with this extremely fast-paced industry. Now, moving on from that insanely long 
tangent, let's talk about what we can expect to see in the short-term future, specifically this year in 2025. Sam Altman posted this tweet asking what people would like to see in 2025 from OpenAI. And the general themes were AGI, agents, much better 4.0 upgrade, much better memory, longer context, grown-up mode, deep research feature, better Sora, and more personalization. And he also states, interestingly, many great updates we have coming were not mentioned at all or very little. So these general themes are likely what OpenAI will be working on this year, and for the many great updates that were not mentioned at all, I think one of those may be a humanoid robot. Because just recently we got some insider information that OpenAI has considered developing their own humanoid robot. It states, OpenAI has recently explored building its own humanoid robots according to the information. The report cites two people with direct knowledge of those conversations, and as we touched on earlier in the video, they are already invested in multiple robotics companies such as Figure, One X, and Physical Intelligence. It further states, in 2021, one, OpenAI abandoned such ambitions after quietly closing its robotics division. Of course, plenty has happened in the past three years, with breakthroughs in both hardware and the AI systems that power them. So this is an important point, because OpenAI actually used to have a robotics division, so for them to make a play on a humanoid robot wouldn't be so far-fetched. In fact, it would actually make a lot of sense if they can manage to raise the capital. OpenAI has recently confirmed that they will be proceeding with a structured change into a for-profit company. They state, OpenAI's board of directors is evaluating our corporate structure in order to to best support the mission of ensuring artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity with three objectives. One, choose a non-profit slash for-profit structure that is best for the long-term success of the mission. Two, make the non-profit sustainable. Three, equip each arm to do its part. So that's a very corporate way to put it, but essentially OpenAI is restructuring into a for-profit company in order to raise more capital. Elon Musk has already sued them countless times for this, and now the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, is getting behind him and supporting his lawsuit. Now, whether you side with OpenAI or Musk and Jeffrey Hinton, the point is OpenAI is about to open up the floodgates to a ton of new funding, potentially even leading to an IPO where anyone can invest in the company. With all this capital, I wouldn't be surprised if they make a play on a humanoid robot, as many other AI companies are starting to do the same. Just recently, Google DeepMind, who already has a robotics team, has partnered with Aptronic to create advanced AI-powered humanoid robots. This is a partnership we'll definitely be keeping a close eye on going forward. So, humanoid robots could be another big topic of discussion in 2025. Senior research scientist at NVIDIA, Jim Fan is extremely bullish on humanoids. He states, It gives me a lot of comfort knowing that we are the last generation without advanced robots everywhere. Our children will grow up as robot natives. They will have humanoids cook Michelin dinners, robot teddy bears tell bedtime stories, and FSD drive them to school. We are the generation of robot immigrants en route to a new world of ubiquitous physical AI. Much like our parents are digital immigrants, learning to realign their lives on six inches of touchscreen. It's a journey of both inventing sci-fi tech and reinventing ourselves. Everything that moves will be autonomous. Every year from now on will be the year of robotics. This is a bold claim for sure, everything that moves will be autonomous, although I truly believe he is spot on. In the future, the way we interact with our devices will likely be basically the same as how we interact with other humans, by talking. We already have advanced advanced voice mode and conversational AI, imagine this integrated with capable robotics that can actually get things done for you in the real world. It will truly change everything. Imagine walking into your kitchen and simply saying, make me a steak, and all of a sudden your fridge opens up, your stove heats up, and some massive robotic arm starts autonomously grabbing stuff and cooking you the steak. While this sounds like sci-fi, it's really not that far away. In some more robotics news, Unitry recently unveiled their newest robot dog, the B2W. This robot dog can navigate pretty much any terrain no matter how treacherous. It has wheels as legs which makes it extremely versatile and speedy. This allows it to get to places quickly that humans cannot, which can be useful for a variety of reasons, notably search and rescue. As you can see, it can also perform very dynamic movements like backflips and whatever this is, and what's really cool about this robot is you can actually ride it. Imagine zooming around on one of these in the streets or even off-road, it seems like it would be a lot of fun. Now, there was one more piece of news in the robotics industry I had to show you guys. It states here, Q6, Toyota's basketball playing robot, claimed the Guinness World Record for the longest shot by a humanoid robot, proving that AI can play basketball with the best of them. So while I don't think humanoid robots will ever replace professional athletes, here is a humanoid robot sinking an 80-footer full-court shot with ease. Let me know in the comments, would you guys watch a league that was only humanoid robots, whether they were playing basketball or soccer or any sport? Do you think people would actually want to see that? 
Anyways, moving on, we have to talk about Meta's digital avatars. So, as this article states, Meta envisions social networks where AI characters coexist alongside human accounts. It states, former Meta creator innovation team head Becky Owen raises some red flags about this AI-filled future. Speaking to the Financial Times, she warns that bad actors could use AI accounts to spread false information. She also points out that AI characters lack real-world experience, genuine emotions, and authenticity compared to human creators. This could lead to platforms being flooded with low-quality posts. Also, Meta requires AI-generated content to be clearly labeled, but enforcing this isn't straightforward. While audio-visual content can be marked with CC labels when platforms support it, detecting AI-generated text remains challenging and largely depends on users choosing to label it themselves. So this is exactly the issue here. As they state themselves, detecting AI-generated text remains challenging, and so does detecting AI-generated images and videos at this point. I mean, if it comes down to the user deciding whether or not to label something as AI-generated, then we're in for a rude awakening because AI-generated content is only going to get more realistic. Just look at these recent images that were generated by Google's state-of-the-art model VO2, like these are literally indistinguishable from reality. Going back to some of Meta's digital AI avatars that are already in use, as you can see from the comments on their post, no one actually wants this. If you look up the dead internet theory on Google, the AI overview tells you that the dead internet theory is a conspiracy theory that claims the internet is now primarily made up of automated content and bot activity. The theory suggests that these bots were created intentionally to manipulate algorithms algorithms and consumers and to control the population. So while you can debate the true motives and intentions of people or corporations who are pushing out automated content, the point is that as AI-generated content becomes indistinguishable from reality, it's not just bot accounts typing away on Twitter and Reddit that we have to worry about, it's now images, videos, and even influencers that can be completely AI-generated without us even knowing. I mean, for example, how do you really know that I am a real human being? Yes, my voice probably sounds more human than even the best AI voices out there right now, and my scripts probably don't sound like they were generated entirely by ChatGPT, but without actually seeing my face, you can't be 100% certain that I am a real person. And even then, even if you could see my face as I was talking, look at how realistic the people in these clips, which are generated by VO2, already are. In a few years, any single piece of content you see on the internet will be impossible to tell if it was human-made or AI-generated. In a sense, the internet will be dead, or at least substantially different than what it once was. And I think maybe Meta sees what's coming and is trying to be at the forefront of it. Those are just my thoughts on the situation though. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this. Let me know in the comments. In other news, DeepSeek AI introduces DeepSeek V3, their latest state-of-the-art fully open source model. This model outperforms Llama 3.1 405B, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and GPT-40 in almost every benchmark. This is absolutely insane for an open source model to do this, and keep in mind this is a Chinese company. So not only is China catching up to the US in the AI race, but open source is also catching up to closed source AI. Now, of course, as I always say, benchmarks don't tell the full story. I highly recommend you try out the model for yourself. I'll leave a link to their official website in the description. But clearly this model is at least on par with the current state of the art, excluding reasoning models like OpenAI's O1. Finally, to end off the video, there was this fascinating research I wanted to talk about where they compared the performance of LLMs on medical tasks to real life clinicians. On NEJM Clinical Pathologic Case Conferences, or CPCs, which are challenging cases often used as a teaching tool for students and residents, clinicians were able to find the correct diagnosis about a third of the time, while O1 Preview was able to correctly diagnose the case more than 75% of the time. That is a major increase in success rate and outperforms any other method out there. And I should note, these tests emphasize logical reasoning and diagnostic approaches, rather than simply finding the correct diagnosis. In another graph here, we have the proportion of cannot miss diagnoses included for residents, attending physicians, and GPT models. While O1 Preview and GPT-4 still sometimes get these extremely important diagnoses wrong, they are a lot more likely to get it right than attending physicians, which is just insane. Like these models are not even trained specifically to perform well on medical tasks, yet they are already outperforming actual doctors. Lastly, you can see that for management and diagnostic reasoning, O1 Preview is levels ahead of even physicians with the help of GPT-4. Keep in mind, this paper only included the performance of O1 Preview, we already have the full O1 model which is significantly better than the Preview, and not to mention we already have O3. So I think it's pretty clear that AI is going to completely revolutionize and transform the healthcare industry. Anyways, that's all the AI news for today, thank you guys so much for watching, if you enjoyed the video please feel free to leave a like, and as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.